What's up everyone, Daddy Warbox here. Today I'm going to be talking about um, how to use Roll20 as a player and highlight some of the important features that you're going to need to know how to use if you want to play games like D&D Online. One of the most important things that you have to know, um, there is a tutorial that Roll20 has and it'll highlight some of the specific features, but there's a couple things that they don't really go over and the first of all is the compendium and that's what this is right here this little black uh, circle with the eye in it if you click on that and you're set up for a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition game uh, basically this is the player's handbook okay the reason that is so important and and I have to explain this to my players all the time um, it's just because like if you are playing a cleric it is as simple as typing the word cleric into the search bar and then you get a couple options if you have cleric if you click on it it tells you you know what you your hit dice proficiencies basically everything you would need to know to roll a brand new cleric and then it has the cleric progression table so that as you continue to play and level up you find out what you gain at each level, how many spell slots, and then underneath all of that, it even tells you what those things are. So if you are playing a game and you go, level two, I get channel divinity once per rest and divine domain. What the hell does that mean? Well, I scroll down and, well, hey, it's all right there. Divine domain. Choose one, blah, 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 blah. Like, it, it, it's, it's really neat because... Um, even if you do not have access to the player's handbook or um, it's even better than just to get in roll 20 and reference the compendium than it is to go onto the DD website and reference the basic rule pdf so i mean it, it's just really neat being able to search everything in the player's handbook at any time another neat thing about the compendium and doing this right here for the class that you are playing is if you are a spell casting class you can simply click spells by level and it tells you at level zero i can take these cantrips and these are the level one spells i have access to so it's like you know very simply um every spell every ability is at the click of a button um and, and it's not just classes and spells any item that you would need to know is in the compendium so if uh, you find an item and you don't know what it is, it becomes very simply, look it up in the compendium. Um, if you, you know, if there's a rule question that, that you're not sure of, well, you could always look that up in the compendium under the rules section. Um, everything, like I said, in, available in the player's handbook is available in the compendium. And it is such an amazing feature and I, I really wish more people knew about it. <laughs> That's, you know, I'm largely making this video so that as I continue to DM more games through Roll20, I could be like, okay, you know, if you're interested in playing, go watch this video where I rant about the compendium for 20 minutes because you need to know how to use this fucking thing. <laughs> um, outside of this right here, okay, and this is, this is something else that I really like um, that Roll20 does. You know, we're going to make a new character, and we're going to name it Test Dude. Okay. Um, this is the default Roll20 character sheet. This is the one that I will use for all of my campaigns. And there's a lot of reasons why. Um, the main reason, though is simply because in this character sheet you can set all your values and we'll go over that later but again if you are a spell casting class like the cleric that we talked about and and this is something that i discovered um looking through the roll 20 wiki um you can drag and drop stuff from the compendium into your character sheet so as a cleric if when I'm choosing my cantrips, um, ordinarily you would, you know, have to type all that shit in. 
you know, you hit the little plus sign, like you're going to add a spell, and then this would open up, and then normally you would have to, you know, guidance, and it's from the whatever school, and you would just copy all that over and you type it in, and then that would prepare your spell. Or, if I look up guidance in the compendium, like right here, I can click and drag, and then I can put that there. You see how it turned yellow? And then I can drop it, and then it just automatically filled all that in. And now, like if I click that, it formats it in an, in a into the chat. So it's just very, very simple, very, very easy to use. Uh, here is our spell, Sacred Flame. It's a cantrip. Um, if we take that and drag it in there, there, it adds it. And now, because this is set as a spell attack, you see in the output, when we click that button, there, it already rolled the damage, it already rolled, and it, it'll tell you what the dexterity save it is. Um, currently it says none, because I didn't set up my character. But that is so, so great. It's just, um, as far as your spells, and then if you, on your main page, where it says attacks and spell casting, there's Sacred Flame right there. So then all you have to do whenever it's your turn and you're deciding what you want to do, uh, I'm going to Sacred Flame. And it tells you the damage and the save. That's why it's so important to be able to use the compendium. Because everything is just going to be, you know, click, drag, and um, that's one of the things that makes this system so easy for newer players to, to get into. Because if you learn how to format your character sheet, then it, it simply becomes, well, what do I want to do? I got to find the place that where I click it and then it'll roll the value. So that's that. Um, you know, since we are already, you know, I, I've been using the cleric as my example. Um, I would also like to go over it because if we're I'm, I'm presenting this for newer players, um, we're gonna make a new character. So we're gonna click this, we're gonna click cleric, and then you see that it changed a couple things automatically. It changed my, you know, saving throws, it highlighted wisdom and charisma, and then it highlighted my um, channel divinity is my class resource now. So what we would do is, we're gonna, his name is gonna be test dude, that's fine. Um, we need some values. So over here on the left side, as a player, you won't have access to all these. Uh, this, to move your token around the map, is important. Drawing on the map can be useful to highlight things for you know other players, but all of these are covered in the tutorial, which I would recommend. So there is our dice roller. We're going to roll 4d6, 5, 8, 10 yuck 1, 2, 3, 4 5, 6 alright so we have a 10 11 16 7 holy crap good thing we're not actually playing with this guy all right, so 16 is going to be our wisdom. 16, it already says our, our wisdom modifier is 3. And then we got a 10, which we'll leave there. And 11, what is this? 12, make that our constitution. 7, ugh. We will make our dexterity to 7. Yeah, well, minus two. That is ugly. And then that's a nine. Eleven. Ten. Sixteen. Seven. Nine. Uh, and I have eleven. Okay, so there's all of our stats. And you see our armor class right now is currently eight. Initiative is minus two. Awesome. Um, so then from there, you would need to 
because we know we're going to play cleric we need to choose our race at which point you would use the compendium and you could think well i want to play a dwarf and you click and what traits dwarfs get and then what and then you can add those in constitution increases by two so this will become a 14. Uh, Dwarves which are young until the age of 50. They live about 350 years. So let's say that uh, this is a 120 year old dwarf. And that so he is lawful good. And that he is four and a half feet tall. And weighs. Uh, oh shit, I don't know. 200. He's very round. Medium. And that's not, not terribly important right now. Base walking speed is 25 feet. He has dark vision. So for that, I would usually just put it here. And then if ever you see that on your sheet and don't remember what it does, look it up in the compendium. Dwarven resilience, advantage on saving throws against poison, and resistance against poison damage. Proficiency with the battle axe, hand axe, light, warhammer, warhammer. And again, saving time, we're just going to copy paste gain proficiency with the artisan tools of your choice smith's tools brewers supplies or mason's tools so we're gonna uh, brewer supplies i want to make beer stone when you make intelligence related to origin stonework you are considered proficient in the blah 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 again copy to paste Speak, read, and write common and dwarvish. All right. So that's that. Um, if you do the sub races, Hill Dwarf is only the one that's available in the compendium. That is the thing. Is as great as the compendium in is, it is not complete. Um, there's a lot of information in the player's handbook, which is considered to be the sole intellectual property of Wizards of the Coast. So only the very bare bones that's needed in order to play is available here. Um, that's why it's still good to have your player's handbook for reference. Let's see, where do we got going on? We got our stats, we got our proficiencies from our race. And then from here, uh, current hit points, for anybody that has never played D&D before and doesn't know, you get your current hit points by your, you know, whatever your hit dice is, which I should still have it open, but I don't. Clerics get a 1d8 per level. So 1d8 is one hit die. So that means that their current hit points would be their 1d8, the maximum value, 8, plus their constitution modifier, which is 2. So his current hit points is 10 of a 10 maximum. Okay? And then from here, um, you have to choose according in your, you know, your class. Starting proficiencies. Let's add, we have to add all those in. Light, medium, armor and shields which we'll put those in here light and medium armor shields simple weapons um, and then you get two skills for that you're proficient in from history insight medicine persuasion and religion uh, we are making a cleric, so let's go with religion. 
Uh, that, that intelligence check. And uh, let's go with insight. Now, starting equipment, every class has a list of things that they can use. Um, you ha So it's always one or the other. First item on our starting equipment is a mace or a warhammer, if proficient, and we are because we're a dwarf. So same as with the spell, um, we look up warhammer in the compendium, it's right there. And then in order to add it to your sheet, all you have to do is you drag it here where it says equipment, you add a row, and you grab your Warhammer and you drag and drop it right there. And then you see Warhammer is added to your item, it calculates the weight, and then it's added up here to your um, attacks and spell casting. Uh, that's one thing that confused me for a really long time. Don't add it to attacks and spell casting. Add it to the equipment and then it will be added automatically. Next thing is scale mail or leather armor or chain mail if proficient. Uh, we are not proficient with chain mail so we're going to go with scale mail so we're going to look it up in the compendium scale scale mail right there same as before we're just going to drag it into our equipment and even it did not update our armor class did it uh, nope armor class 14. so let's uh let's go ahead and do that Okay, um, then we can have a light crossbow and 20 bolts or any simple weapon. Um, let's just take the crossbow, light crossbow, same as before, grab it, drop it there, there's that. There's our crossbow bolts. So we will put those right there. And we have 20 of them because that's what the book said. And then use as a resource. So there's our crossbow bolts there too. Um, so then whenever we make an attack with the crossbow, you know, it, the damage will roll, but then you just have to remember to tick, I shot an arrow, I shot an arrow. I shot a bolt, not an arrow. They're distinctly different things. And this this is what you do. Um, a priest pack or an explorer pack. You do it again. Priest. What? Okay, let's try pack. There's a priest pack. And you can click on it and you can read what's in it. Backpack, blanket, candles, tinderbox, alms box, incense, sensor, vestments, rations, water skin. Or Explorer's Pack, Backpack, Bedroll, Mess Kit, Tinderbox, Torches, Rations, Water Skin, Rope. Pretty similar. Um, let's go with the Explorer's Pack. Again, add it, drag it in. Now the thing is, okay, doing it for the pack, and it's going to add it, and then it's got the combined total weight of the pack. And if you click on it, and you scroll down here, this is a very, very tiny box. Um... It says includes a backpack, a mess kit. You know, everything is included inside that little box there. Um, that, I'm not really, I don't really like that because it's just too little. Um, so, I don't know. You can either leave it as the Explorer's Pack there and, and just kind of know that I have rope and a backpack. Or if you want, you can add those items individually. It's really up to you. And then the last thing says a shield and a holy symbol. So then again, I can type good. So again, shield. Well, hey now. Drag it in from the compendium. Update the armor class. Okay, well, we'll just add it. Holy symbol. So there's that. Um, and that's our, our starting equipment. After that, the last thing you need to do 
and, and this is important because it also dictates your starting equipment, is your background. Um, and again, we're going to reference our compendium. Backgrounds. And I believe the backgrounds doesn't give us a whole lot. Yeah, Acolyte is the only one it references in the uh, compendium. But the player's handbook has all types. Oh, sweet. You're not even going to give me the Acolyte, huh? Let's echo light. All right, so we're going to make him an Acolyte. Um, you don't have to do this. So skill proficiencies, insight, and religion. Oh, we already took religion. Um, and insight. Ah, uh -huh, we suck. Well, see, now in this case, what I would recommend is back in our cleric. Our cleric proficiencies, whatever they were. Um... History, don't take religion insight if you're going to be an acolyte. Let's do persuasion in history. History. There. Um, two additional languages of your choice. So, I don't know. We're going to speak... We're going to speak Draconic, because let's see, Orcish and Draconic. I just realized you can't see anything in that box there. That's okay. Eh. There we go. Aha, down there in that box, Orcish and Draconic. Uh, holy symbol which we already have because we're a cleric. Prayer book and wheel, five sticks of insight. So it gives us more stuff. And these are things that we could just type in. So prayer book. Incense, of which we have five sticks. Vestments, common clothes, 15 gold. Next, um, you get the Shelter of the Faithful feature, which that, you know, anytime there's a, something that you might want to reference, uh, simply copy and then you can drop it into the Features and Traits. Or if that doesn't do it for you, um, you can also put it into Bio, Additional Features. All right. That's probably where I would put that because that's from your background. And then here you have personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Those are some things that help you flesh out your character. Um, they are roll tables. So we're just going to go ahead and we'll 1d8 show you. So first for personality, 7. And that is I've enjoyed fine food, drink, and high society among my temple's elite. Rough living grates on me. That's that's nice. We got, and that would go right there in the personality box. And anytime you have a box where you know it's not quite meeting it, all of these are resizable. These, these little two hash marks in the bottom, you can just click and drag and it widens and shortens them as you need. So now ideals... Where is my dice roller? There it is. So ideals, we got a four. Power, I hope one day to rise atop of my face religious hierarchy. 
boom. Bond. Oh, hey, these are only D6s. Six. I seek to preserve a sacred text my enemies want to destroy. Oh no. And then flaw. My piety sometimes leads me to blindly trust those that profess faith in, faith in my God. So now we are all, we're just about good to go. Oh, zero experience points, haven't chosen. Oh yes, sir, did we said he was a dwarf. We already even did that. I just didn't write it up there. And you see, at this point, you know, we have almost everything, you know, that is given to us from our background, from our race, from our class at level one. And you are in a position to play. Except for we're not. <laughs> because we never finished setting up our cleric. Um, spell casting, divine domain. So, I'll we'll say this is a life domain cleric. And so, first thing was we go, so we get three cantrips. And two first level souls. We took guidance. We could took sacred flame. And then we'll take spare the dying. That for our third cantrip. And then we get two first level spells. And that's what these two things are. Uh, two first level spell slots and how many you have so when you expend a spell you simply just tick down until you're at the appropriate level uh two first level spells we'll take cure wounds and detect magic those are good spells right so then again show you this cure with one r cure wounds and detect magic and since I dragged and dropped them, um, they are simply ready to be used. And you see Cure Wounds has even been added to my tax of spellcasting. And then as you continue to level up and you get other um, cleric abilities, like at level two, you get your channel divinity. Um, I would take that and I would simply add it right there. And, and just copy and paste it into your features and traits box so that you would have it easily referenced. And then here you can use to track how much of your channel divinity that you've actually used. So that's that. Um, that's how you use the compendium and that's how you create a character. And I think that this video has been long enough. So we're gonna leave it at that for today. Um, hopefully my battery's charged hopefully you found this video helpful or useful um, like I said the tutorial on roll 20 is really good but it doesn't go over everything and I, I really don't like that the tutorial doesn't show you how to use compendium and drag and drop into your character sheet because it really makes things a lot simpler and for, like I said, anybody that's new to Dungeons and Dragons or new to Roll20 period, the ability to just set up your character sheet by drag and drop and then taking your turn instead of, you know, having to reference, oh, well, my Sacred Flame is a DC 13 and blah, blah, blah. You just click the button. You click the button. It tells you what the save is. It tells you how much damage it does. And it just really streamlines things for the online experience. So, again... If you enjoyed this, please leave a like on the video. If you really like my face, subscribe to the channel. And by all means, please leave any comments below. Let me know what you think. Give me feedback. Tell me what you'd like to see in future videos.